Okay, guys, I've never recorded a video like this, but I've become very interested in this Las Vegas shooting storyline and, and the information that's coming out. Full disclosure, it's very personal to me. I was in the crowd when it occurred. Fortunately, me and my wife and our friends were able to get out of there. But what I want to do is I want to look at some audio from a video of a recording that was taken. I can tell where this person was. They were in the VIP stands taking cover. They're on the stages up here. They're on the right side when you're facing the stage. And these stands right here, you can tell from the stairs and the railing were, were part of that VIP area. So I'm gonna let you just listen to this audio real quick. It's about 10 seconds of audio. And then we're gonna talk about it and break it down. So let's listen. What did we hear there? That was interesting. Well, we hear this one gun going off in the beginning, right? We see these, this part of the sound wave here. And then all of a sudden, right about here, another gun starts firing. So let's, let's hear just that. Let's, let's hear that transition a little bit further back. Here we go. The interesting thing about this as well is that this sharper, closer gun that we're hearing, uh, it's, it looks like it almost the other gun almost stopped shooting. But what you're actually seeing here is the microphone of the phone that's recording this video. I assume it's a phone. It could be a GoPro or something. It's probably a phone. Is actually utilizing a, a noise canceling feature because this sound is so much more intense, it believes that's the sound, the main sound that the user is trying to record. So it's blocking out this, this quieter sound, which it believes to be background sound. So you can you notice that this gun actually is still shooting when when this gun stops going off, and slowly the microphone normalizes back to recording that sound. So let's just hear that really quick. So you, you hear it here, and you hear it here, and, and it's picking back up again here. And you can actually hear it that whole time, but it's, you know, it's, it's drowned out by this other uh, closer gun. So one of the things that I did is I went ahead and counted the number of shots in this other gun. <clears throat> and we can, we can notice that uh, this is a perfect example right here. This shot goes off right at two minutes and two seconds into the video. So we can count the number of shots to two minutes and three seconds. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's just before the, th the, the next second. And so simple math will tell me 10 times 60, that's about 600 rounds per minute. Well, what shoots 600 rounds per minute? Well, interestingly enough, it's not an AR-15 with a bump fire stock. Let's listen to that real fast, and then we're gonna borrow a little bit more. From so let's go ahead and borrow a little bit more from this video. What was that that we were looking at? What we were looking at was an M240 belt fed machine gun, not having been reported being possessed by Steven Paddock. But it sounds like that's what we're hearing in this video. It sounds like that's what we're hearing in these other videos on YouTube. And it most certainly sounds like in this video 
that there's two guns going off at the same time. One other thing that I did on this clip is I went ahead and counted these shots. So I counted all of these shots, even through here. I'd estimate a little bit here based on the rate of fire. And all the way to here, there's 94 shots approximately. 94 shots in a string. We haven't been told of any 94 or 100 round magazine possessed by Stephen Paddock. But yet there's 94 shots in a row without a reload. That's interesting, isn't it? What could do that? A belt-fed machine gun certainly could. One of the other things I wanted to do when talking about the cyclic rate, because we've determined that this main gun here is approximately 600 rounds a minute, is find out how fast this other gun we hear is shooting. I know people are gonna start talking about echoes and things like that, but one thing about echoes is that they come back at the same rate of speed that they left at. So you're not gonna hear an echo of one gun firing uh, 600 rounds a minute and another gun firing a different uh, rate because the speed of sound is constant. It travels the same speed all the time. So I went ahead and I counted these shots here that we see, these sharper shots. Let's hear them really quick. And they start right here in, in this video editing program. This is two minutes, five seconds, and this is the 11th frame. It's 30 frames a second. So they start right there at the 11th frame, and the last one is right there at the 29th frame of the next second. That's 48 frames, 19 frames from one second and 29 in the other. If you divide those 48 frames by 30, that gives you 1.6 seconds. And then if you divide those 18 shots by 1.6 seconds, that gives you a cyclic rate of 11.25 rounds per second. 11.25 times 60 equals 675 rounds a minute. It's not super significantly faster than the other gun, but it is faster. And one thing that that proves is that can't possibly be an echo because sound travels at the same rate of speed constantly. It does not change. So your echo cannot come back at a faster cyclic rate than the sound that's leaving the gun. So there's no possible way that that can be an echo. It has to be a completely separate gun. So I wanna talk really quick about that cyclic rate or the, the rate of fire. There is some way to slightly modify the rate of fire in an AR-15. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how an AR-15 works. An AR-15 is a direct gas impingement system. What that means is that when the hammer here, this is the hammer in the gun, strikes this, this is the firing pin, it sends that firing pin forward into the primer of the cartridge, which ignites the gunpowder. And that causes a rapid expansion of gas because it's in a confined space and that gas pushes forward. It pushes the projectile out of the barrel and it follows that projectile. And in an AR-15 in this direct gas impingement system, there's a little hole in the top of the barrel that's further down the barrel that comes back up this tube right here. This is called the gas tube. And it, it pushes into the gas key. This is the gas key. It's part of this entire thing that we're looking at here is called the bolt carrier group. This is your bolt. This is the carrier group, including the gas key. So that sends the carrier group to the rear, which it hits against a uh, buffer and a buffer spring, and the spring sends it back towards the, the action of the, the firearm to pick up another round from the magazine here, chamber it so that it can be fired again. So let's look and see what that looks like. So here's the hammer hitting your firing pin, sends the gas and the bullet forward, comes back, hits the gas key, sends the bolt carrier group backwards, hits the spring and the buffer, and is sent back forward to chamber another round. Now there's some way to modify how fast this happens, and it's by changing the length of that gas tube, which means how far does the bullet have to travel down the barrel before it sends gas back up that gas tube. Now as you can imagine, that would be very quick, right? Because how fast does a bullet come out of a gun? Um, and so even if you could increase this gas tube by 15 to 20%, which I think is about the maximum between the three lengths, three standard lengths of gas tube, which is carbine or carbine, uh, mid-length and rifle length, 
uh, even if it was 15 to 20 percent longer you're not going to decrease the rate of fire by that much because that's only a small portion of that entire cycle right so the gas has to come down and then come back up the gas tube and then send that bolt back so no matter how long it takes that gas to go down the, the barrel and then back up the gas tube it doesn't affect how fast that bolt goes back once it, it gets hit with gas and then comes back forward from the spring so you're not going to change the rate of fire that much so let's listen to this audio one more time keeping all of that in mind <laughs> Let's just listen to this portion really quick. Interesting. Now, what if we listen to this, this video right there again? That's even a little bit faster. One thing's for sure. This gun here that we're hearing, most of this clip, is not an AR-15. It's not going to be shot that slow. It's not going to sound that way. Notice the sound of the shots in this, in this. Notice how sharp they are. That's what a cartridge from an AR-15 sounds like. Similar to that. So, what this tells me is that the, the story that we're being fed by the media and by the FBI and by the LV Metro PD is not what the evidence shows. It simply isn't. And I don't know if maybe they're trying to play their cards close to the vest so they don't tip their hand. Maybe that's the case. But if that is the case, I don't know if there's another example of them doing that when eyewitnesses and evidence is available to show otherwise, other than what the story is that they're putting out. And it certainly doesn't explain what the media is putting out there and why they're ignoring clips like this. So I just want to ask you guys to really consider this type of information, consider what would be the reason for suppressing it. I don't know. I can theorize on it. I could come up with three or four theories probably, but that doesn't make them true. But what is true, is that this type of stuff right here, this type of clip, <laughs> is not being talked about, is being completely ignored, isn't being brought up on CNN or Fox News or NBC with an audio analysis from an expert. Why? Why? Ask yourself why. That's what I'm doing. Good night and God bless.